So uh, what I wanted to cover today is uh, talk about our next generation mobile applications and some of the network challenges we're seeing there. Um, that's a nice segue into why uh, we think mobile edge compute um, can be a real valuable um, system architecture for uh, addressing some of those concerns. And um, the culminating, the cool part is I actually talk about supercomputing at the edge. So we have a demonstration of a system that we're working on. It's a collaboration actually, and I'll, I'll talk more about it in a moment, about uh, some of the progress we've made in uh, developing uh, just such a system. Uh, it's a real world design example. And then we'll do a summary and wrap up. So uh, I think JAG had a nice uh, intro to talk about how uh, just the uh, incredible growth we're expecting to see on uh, data, right? And um, you know, down on this slide, you see just some of those, and I'll drill down into it a bit more about what those applications might mean, but uh, everything from cloud compute, transportation, M to M, some people like to say I IoT, um, uh, military uh, 3CI, communications, control, command, intelligence, uh, finance, health, etc. cetera. Um, these are some of the, uh, the promises and some of the needs, really, uh, of, the, of the near future. The implication is, um, you know, real-time uh, communications, and uh, you know, this is something uh, not so new to the wireless domain. Of course, we've been doing real-time communications for a long time. Uh, it also has implications though on the data centers that are actually serving up this content, and um, there's a real parallel, really, to see, uh, you know, the, what's going on both uh, today in wireless, but also uh, the future for uh, for data centers and the like. Um, they need to think fast, and really the trend that we're seeing is a, uh, a low latency trend here. So as we do drill down into the, some of those applications, um, again, it's just a real explosion of data, and I think this chart actually gives a real hint about what we'll see. So uh, for example, video and audio analytics or media analytics, uh, both military and public, could be surveillance, search, intelligence, public safety, uh, with that media, and especially high definition media, you're going to be talking about the need to transcode that media, uh, the need to analyze that media. Uh, media caching, of course, if there's lots and lots of this media, especially high definition, you know, what can you do to, uh, to mitigate uh, congestion up through the networks? Augmented reality, um, I'll have to say, uh, um, I'm kind of a nerd and uh, I kind of like video games and stuff. It seems really cool. I don't know how much this is actually going to catch on, but certainly the, uh, the need and the ability to support that would be there if we have this uh, next generation capability in our network. So, you know, imagine doing overlays. And, and if you go on the web, you can see lots of these examples where you can do overlays of marketing information wherever you look. If you walk into a mall and you can actually see uh, what restaurants are available because it's around noon and I'm hungry. Uh, these kinds of things are possible. Um, targeted marketing, again, this is more about lo location-based services. Uh, cloud computing, you know, uh, I keep looking forward to a time where I can have a very uh, energy-efficient laptop, a uh, cloud computer, if you will, which just has a thin client, and all the processing, all the storage, et cetera, is all happening uh, up in the cloud and almost invisible to me. And then transportation, so that's part of this MTM. Uh, transportation would be one subset of those. So uh, autonomous vehicles might be a little further out, but certainly the ability to improve safety among vehicles would be a key, uh, key application area. What all this means really, uh, as you roll it up, is uh, streaming live data. And when we say live, it, it, a lot of this is happening in real time. So we're talking about a, a relative uh, new paradigm where typically uh, uh, data centers, et cetera, to work on chunks of data. Here we're actually having to address the need on more of a real-time uh, uh, standpoint. Again, that lends itself to a need for really lowering the latency through these networks. As we look to the uh, wireless standards themselves, certainly the uh, bandwidth itself is increasing. You can see the standards there at the bottom, GSM, WCDMA, all the way up through 5G. So that uh, bandwidth, the good news is that it's definitely going up, and that's helpful to me and you. But as we look out, especially as we look out to 2018 for the first field trials, maybe 2020 for production uh, with 5G, uh, there's a real challenge to be had there. So we're talking about an order 
of magnitude decrease in latency getting going from 10 milliseconds down to one millisecond. That's LTEA down to 5G respectively. And uh, that's 150 times reduction from GSM. So that's just massive. And how to do that is, is, is really a challenge. Other challenges we see as we talk about this kind of you know, exponential growth in the data, this kind of need to support these real-time real streaming types of live data is uh, potential bottlenecks further up in the network. So this is a source from Ericsson again here, but uh, again, as we're looking at the uh, congestion of the network, it'll kill your quality of service, could kill your latency. And so uh, uh, this is one area we need to improve on, for example. Uh, Location-based services would also be enabled better, and also if you could centralize that somewhere uh, lower in the network, closer to the access, you can improve the, uh, the uh, congestion there. Uh, again, the support for high definition media that could only further congest the network, streaming media, and uh, M to M, and we'll talk more about that in a moment, but M to M where you want, where you really push that one millisecond threshold. These are areas where we can't afford congestion up through the network. So what do we do? We take a look at it with mobile edge compute. Now there's uh, consortiums out there that are definitely looking at uh, the requirements, the standard standardization, and, and then the features here for uh, making these systems possible. So uh, here would be your mobile edge compute platform, for example. Uh, again, supporting all these various types of applications, right? And what you could do then is actually bring those apps uh, some of them might have t traditionally been in the uh, data center, for example. Bring them out toward the edge so you can support that big data or the analytics thereof, the Internet of Things, social analytics, etc. In bringing those apps within the edge, you, uh, you would expect to be able to, one, improve your latency, minimize the congestion, provide a better uh, support for real time, a better quality of service to the user, uh, better support, th support those location awareness types of applications and improve on your throughput. However, in saying that, uh, Mobile Edge Compute then creates its own system implica implications, really its own challenges. So uh, ideally, again, as, as, as the folks uh, preceding me mentioned, we'd have these uh, essentially pools of processing and storage and this, this implies a number of things. It implies uh, sc scalability, certainly, uh, low power, certainly. You have uh, disaggregated resources, and you also have heterogeneous requirements to support uh, you know, GPUs for video, x86, for example, uh, network processing and the like. And so you do have a heterogeneous setup. So you want to be able to openly support those heterogeneous setups with open standards, open hardware, and even open software. And then further, again, as uh, Jag and, uh, and, the, and the gentleman from Freescale mentioned, um, you know, supporting NFV, SDN functions, um, centralizing your fabric management or the management of the system, and hopefully having that um, uh, outside the network boundary itself. And then minimizing low power and TCO. If you're going to be putting a uh, server or essentially a data center at all the access edge, it's going to be very key to drive down uh, your TCO, minimize your uh, cost itself, but also your operating cost. So IDT's uh, been working uh, in collaboration with uh, a number, number of key uh, folks and partners on uh, uh, Mobile Edge Compute's platform uh, just to address these kinds of things. As I mentioned before, uh, media is going to be probably one of the single greatest and, and probably the leading application requirement for these types of systems. So what we have here is an example where we're tackling probably the, uh, the foremost among those applications, which would be video analytics at the edge. Uh, back in uh, 2014, IDT uh, collaborated with Orange and NVIDIA, and we announced a uh, really a prototype platform that leveraged NVIDIA's Tegra uh, K1 mobile processors. These are very high performance processors, but they're very noteworthy in that they're not the most uh, I should say the most intensive compute platform, but they're definitely the lowest power per, uh, per performance. 
And we leverage those uh, along with a uh, low performance fabric or a high performance low latency fabric, so it'd be RapidIO in this case, to uh, demonstrate a GPU capability, uh, a GPU compute capability that is actually scalable uh, uh, and that would meet these kind of uh, mobile edge compute needs. This is again a very, uh, very much a prototype. So as you look to the picture there, that's actually the uh, the platform. There are four sets of essentially uh, cards that uh, look look like evaluation cards. They very much were, but this again was a proof of concept. The uh, requirement for mobile edge compute would look very similar um, for that video analytics portion anyway. So you'd have those four GPUs and then x86 would be handling uh, the movement of the data itself, GPUs providing the compute and analytics. And again, that low latency, uh, high performance network here with uh, PCI Express bridging into the uh, RapidIO. It's a fault tolerant system, it's hot swappable, et cetera. And we can get uh, really a best in class latency of 1.2 microseconds. And that's key again to support those real time requirements. So uh, lo and behold, uh, just a little while later, uh, Concurrent also got involved in this uh, effort and they've productized actually something that's based almost identically on that, on that uh, demo supercompute system. So this is the uh, snapshot of the actual card. Uh, that card has two such uh, Tegra K1 GPUs here and then the uh, RapidIO switching here. If you notice, there's a uh, connector here that's a mezzanine connector. So this, this lower block diagram shows an additional two GPUs. So in total on this AMC card, and for the folks that aren't familiar with uh, advanced mezzanine cards, it's a board about yay big, about yay high, uh, about 60 watts. We're able to get four GPUs, uh, a total of 384 gigaflops per GPU, 1.5 teraflops on a given AMC, and that's uh, 12 teraflops possible in a one unit. I'll expand on that in just a moment. Uh, the key thing is we were able to uh, scale that out, uh, leveraging that lo low latency fabric. This, this particular slide covers the platform on supporting that heterogeneous requirement. So again, as I draw this out, here's the actual uh, platform. This is the, uh, uh, this was an open standard platform. It's a 19 inch 1U. It's also uh, compatible with uh, OCP uh, electrical and mechanical standards. So it has uh, also been submitted into the uh, open compute project uh, for data centers and, and high performance computing. But this is a, this is a block diagram of, of what's really possible with this heterogeneous setup, right? So we've got anything from ARM, DSP, FPGA, x86, GPU within that box. These are basically plug and play uh, uh, cards within this, uh, this carrier platform. And then it's networked out through uh, both of 20 gig RapidIO as well as uh, Ethernet. If we take that server platform and you take three uh, such GPU cards along with that x86 card, plug them into this 1U, you end up with about 18 teraflops in that single server. Now, this could be standalone, so, uh, and it could also scale up to uh, four boxes uh, without even using a, an additional top of rack switch. However, if you want to further scale this to a rack scale setup, uh, ProDrive is actually uh, now offering publicly a uh, 38, 38 by 20 gig uh, top of rack switch that's using uh, RapidIO technology. So you could take that 1U server and scale it, uh, say, up to 38 uh, different 1U blades. Uh, in total, then, we'd be looking at uh, half a petaflop in a given rack of GPU performance. Um, I don't think you'll probably need that at the mobile edge, <laughs> but uh, that's just a, uh, an, uh, it gives you a sense of the density that can be achieved by this kind of setup. So for, uh, to wrap up as, as supercomputing at the edge, uh, what we've got then is this system that's been built up and we're doing work on it right now actually. I wasn't unfortunately in a position just yet to show you some of the results, but we're actually running video analytics in the lab right now, and they're looking really good. Um, I hope to share more of those, and certainly uh, at the booth we can show you what this, uh, this platform looks like and talk about uh, uh, what, the, uh, what the applications are that are being run as well as what the results are looking like. But you've got rack scale, 
uh, with terabit switching. Uh, we've got a half, half a petaflop in uh, demonstration today. And uh, the next generation of the server card will actually go up to uh, 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 doubling the number of uh, uh, processor boards that can go into that. So uh, up to a full petaflop per rack. Again, it's a 19-inch uh, standard with OCP compatible, would be used to uh, mobile edge. It is heterogeneous, as, as we showed. And uh, key to support that rack scale and to support these open initiatives is that the, uh, the software is, is uh, uh, at least for the, uh, the network itself, is uh, open standard. It's open software, open APIs. The fabric management is coming available uh, this month. That's also open standard, so they could be also uh, leveraged into the, uh, the management of that network. And then so is the RDMA, RDMA and, and performance data path uh, software functions. Those are coming available this month as well. So again, uh, uh, we will have a booth later today and, and uh, have a demo of at least of some portions of the hardware there. So uh, feel free to uh, come visit us at the IDT booth. Appreciate it.